everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com, and this is a follow-up video on my recent 2022 video on introduction to the command line bash. In this video, what I'm going to do is focus on one, a uh, bash functions, like how do you write a bash function, and two, um, being able to run bash scripts. So we take all these commands that we can put on the command line and write them in files that we can run so that we don't have to type them over and over again. Okay, so essentially, Bash in itself is kind of its own programming language where you can program tasks on the command line. Okay, so first let's talk about functions. So let me go back to the demo folder we made in the first video. So if I remember right, we made a file called uh, not bash files, bash practice. Okay, so I'm going to cd into that file, cd bash practice. Now to create a bash script, you can just create a file like I will do, so what we'll do is we'll touch a file called touch bash, um, we'll just say, you know, uh, script one dot bash. Okay, so that creates the file. So if we do ls, see there's the file script one dot bash. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up in VS Code. So again, if you have v Visual Studio Code installed, all you have to do is run code. Now on Mac, keep in mind that the code command doesn't automatically get added uh, to your path. So you, what you have to do in VS Code is you have to click over here to your command palette and you'll find some command like add you know a code command the prompt or something like that. So just keep that in mind on Windows and on Linux the code command should automatically get added to the path. So in that case you should be able to use it after installing Visual Studio Code. If you don't have Visual Studio Code install it. Makes life a lot easier editing that than using Nano or Vim um, when you're using just a normal graphical operating system. Okay. But I can type in code script one dot bash and see how it's going to open up that file here in, in Visual Studio Code, which it has nothing right now. So to write a function in bash, all you do is you literally write the word function and then you're going to write what the new command name is going to be. Okay, so let's say we, we what we want to do is We'll call it echo things. That'll be the name of the function. Then you're going to use parentheses just like uh, you would in any other programming languages function syntax. The only difference is you never put anything in these parentheses, at least not that I'm aware of. In other languages, you usually would put, you would name arguments in this. So if I wanted to have three arguments, I would put like three variable names. But the way it's going to work in Bash is that the first argument's always going to be like dollar sign one. The second argument's always going to be dollar sign two. The third argument's always going to be dollar sign three. So in that case, you don't really have to think about what your argument names are going to be. So I can do something like this. First thing I'd like to do is echo whatever the uh, first argument is. So I'll say, hey, this is the first argument. So I'll type in a string, uh, argument, and then I'm going to inject whatever the first argument is. Then I'll echo something else. We'll say echo. So each line is going to be one command. And you can any command that you could put in the terminal. So I could even use other programs. So anything that's in your path. Okay, so if I have access to Python, Ruby, I could put all those commands in here and automate all that stuff, which is really cool. Okay, this is the second argument. Number two. Okay, and then there's there's that function. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I have auto save on, so that's gonna auto save. But now if I go back here to the terminal and I were to type in echo things, it should give me command not found. Okay, the reason being is that the command still doesn't exist. Just because I wrote it in the bash file doesn't mean this some of this function is available. I have to run the file. This is why, like, if there are functions that you plan on just having as normal commands, you might want to add them to the bash RC that we discussed in the first video. And again, if you're on Mac, it would be a zush RC. Um, so you could add those functions there. But so in this case, since I just put it in a separate file, what I could do is I could run the file manually by using the source command, which allows me to run these bash files. And I can just say source scripts one dot bash. See that ran it. And now if I type echo things, oh, I didn't give it a second argument. So let's see here, echo things. So here's like the command name to give it the pass it arguments. I would write like cheese bread. So cheese would be the first argument because it's the first thing that I typed after the command. Then bread would be the next thing, after, would be the next argument after that. 
And you see, the first argument is cheese, the second argument is bread. So this could be really useful for things like automating other commands, where you can sit there and say, okay, instead of having to do all these commands separately, you could just have one command, pass it the arguments it needs, and then it just executes the commands that you want. Okay, I usually use this for like git purposes. So for example, I'll do something like, um, I have a particular function called like pushy that I use to push my code up. Okay, so I would do something like, you know, basically the basic way that particular function works is like pushy. And what's like it does like it's like git add dot. So it adds everything in the current folder to git. It then does git commit dash m. And then for the commit message, I pass it an argument. And then what I do is I do git, um, git, was it git push? And then I put it, pass it another argument for like, you know, the, the remote and then the, the, um, particular branch I want to push up. So this allows me to just do all of this with one command. I can pass it the appropriate arguments to kind of customize it. And, uh, that's pretty cool. And then I have like an, so you can see how this could be really, really useful in just making life a lot easier and having to reduce the amount of boilerplate you have to write every time you want to like push to GitHub or anything like that. Okay. Um, cool. So there's that. And basically, uh, again, and you can put anything in here. Okay. So I could, I could, uh, you know, I could do, I could set up aliases in this script. Um, I could alter variables in the script so I can, you know, go alter my path, whatever you want to do in this script. And again, this script is not going to automatically run every time you start bash because it's not your bash RC. Okay. So let me go back to VS code. So again, the bash RC runs cause that's what bash is programmed to do. So every time you open up a new bash terminal, this script runs. So if I want those functions to exist on every time I start terminal, I would want to put it in this file. But if I just want to, like, once in a while, run the file and have those functions available to me, I might have it separately. Or I could even just put the source command in here. I could be like source in my bash RC. I could write all my functions and aliases here, and then just here write like source, and then put the path to the file. So we like tilde slash dot uh, no uh, bash practice slash script one dot bash. Okay, and see so it would it would run that script which would make all those files available. So that way I don't have to put everything in my bash RC. Okay, I do that. I organize a lot of my bash stuff into other files. So I think I have that somewhere around here. Uh, where do I have that? Yeah, this, this line right here, which you could also do with a dot. A dot would also do the same thing as a writing source. So if I put dot and then a file name, it's basically saying execute this file. Okay, and if it's a bash file, it'll just execute the bash script. So I have all my bat. So that's basically the way I have it set up. It ex this bash exports file actually then runs all the other files that I have that set everything up for me. And then there's a bunch of stuff that just different installs I did added to my bash RC. Okay. But essentially that's how you could script bash. And again, you can literally script anything I could like, for example, if I wanted the script running, like creating a Python virtual environment, I could do something like this, like, you know, function create V E N V and then just do something like, Python dash M V E N V. Okay. And then I can give the virtual environment a name and then I can automatically activate it. Or actually we'll create a separate function for activate V and V. So activate V E N V. And again, the way it works is that that command would have created a folder. Um, and it's always the same. So if you know, if you know sort of like your file system and you know what kind of files are going to be created, you can, you can do stuff like this. So you can just be like, uh, source one, the argument or yeah, dot slash the one slash bin slash activate. Okay. And then that would activate, um, the virtual environment. And actually, I, I actually like those two functions. Those two functions work, make a lot of sense. So I might actually just add those. What I'll do is I'll, I'll push this particular script up to GitHub. So that way you guys can like see these functions. But the idea is here is like you can get pretty creative with like sort of the functions that you write to make your life easier. So just think of like then you kind of repetitive tasks and be like, okay, well, you know, I have a hard time remembering this command. That's perfect for like an alias or a function. Um, or if it's a task that has lots of steps, you know, like, okay, I want to make a file, copy it to another folder, move it. I could just put this all in a 
bash script, define these bash functions and have these commands that make my life easier for me. Okay, and I think if I remember right, I think you can write comments in here like just with the hash. So just be like, this does nothing but echo stuff. So I'm probably going to comment this one out because I really just don't want this. To be. Or here's what I'll do. I'm going to copy this stuff. Okay, and let's just take a look at the actual, where is it over here? Okay, let's go to the, where I actually have this stuff. Uh, CD, CD bash files. And what I am going to do is open this folder in VS Code, code dot. So you see, once you start getting really good with VS Code, I mean, with uh, the terminal, see how quickly I can just go, hey, I'm going to go open up this folder in VS Code, and it is open. Okay? A lot faster than me clicking with my mouse because you can just operate. And you see, I have this bash exports file, and this bash exports file, it does all my my uh, path functions, all my path stuff. I set up a couple of aliases. This is probably really unnecessary because there's already the LL command that does that. Um, I have to I had to create like a alias to run Postman. Long story, but you see that I run all these other files and then these other files add stuff. So let's see, I have all these functions like pushy for pushing to Git. This is for like publishing libraries to Git. If I need to reinstall an npm library, one of the things that like always comes up when you're doing web development is having to kill a port. So having to kill this port, like I do, pretty sure I do have this up on GitHub somewhere. Um, so here I have some stuff for like using vir uh, Python virtual environments. But I kind of like the the way I did that other one better. Make the virtual environment. Hmm. Not sure why I'm making a folder here. That's unnecessary. So I'll take that out. Okay. And use pi n if that is fine. Only problem with this is that it's not as flexible. Um, so I'm going to add those other commands that I have in that other file, VS Code. VS Code, the other window. Here we go. I am going to copy these. I like this. Okay, and I do use Python enough that so that's going to be useful. Okay. Cool. Great V and V. Do I really want to keep those other ones? Yeah, I mean... I'll keep them. They're not hurting anybody. Okay. And then I have like this use conda to help me easily activate like conda because I also have like anaconda installed along with like normal Python and act, you know to activate it I have to go this particular path. So context. Yep. And then like so yeah I have all these different uh, things in here. Like this is like for some virtual NV stuff, some a different aliases I've set up to like open like cpan because like this command was just like a pain in the butt to remember point is you can make your life a lot easier using bash scripting and bash functions that's sort of the point of this video okay so i'm going to close this window go back to this window here um and try to see if there's any other like low hanging fruit there are ways to like write loops so if you, if you again if you go to here and we say hey you know looping and bash you could do that. And the reason you'd want to do that is if you want to loop through like a list of files. Okay. So let's see if we can find like a little example here. So you can see like 4i in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you're saying basically you want to loop five times. You can then echo something. This would be more um, if you found like a list of like files you wanted to. Like what you could do is you could run a function that gets like a count of files. Okay. And then you can save that in a variable. Then do something like this, where you kind of generate a a, a, a a number. So in this case, it would say, hey, I want to do like one through the number of files. It would then loop, and then like you can then put the logic to loop and like, let's say, change all the file names or move all the files from this folder to that folder and so forth. So you can create some pretty um, useful functions when you really start getting, getting deeper into like learning how to use Bash. Um, but just so you're aware, so you can make it easy to like move folder A to folder B. Stuff like that, probably not super important because at least if you're working on if you're working on a server again you have no GUI then that's very important but here like on a graphical user interface you could probably just use your like little file explorer and kind of get the same job done so that's not so bad but hopefully this gives you a little bit more perspective again on a Mac computer it's not going to be bash RC that you probably want to edit but the zush zsh RC file that should be in the same place so keep that in mind Okay, which would be in your home folder.
which is the tilde folder. But yeah, so this should give you a good overview of how to use Bash. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.